All right, welcome to Chestnut Creek School of the Arts virtual class. Um, uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to be painting just a little wood square. We got this. Um, you can get these at our gift shop um, in Galax for $2 for a square, or you can just um, work with what you have. You can use a scrap piece of wood or whatever. We're going to do a little happy harvest um, painting. We're going to kind of paint this white and then just do a little wreath and please excuse my boys in the background they are rambunctious today and i have been trying all morning to get this recorded so i'm just using um this acrylic paint any white acrylic paint will work and i'm going to just squirt it right on here just to save spot space on my palette i can always add more and i'm just going to use one of my um older brushes you can use any kind of brush you have and I am kind of wanting a whitewash look. Probably paint with the grain of the wood. I can always turn it. I was gonna do a little diamond orientation rather than the square, but you can do a square if you prefer. Um, if you wanted to stain this first, you could always do that. Um, and then kind of sand it down after you paint white. But I am gonna let this dry. Um, I did a hand lettering video last week that's posted on the art channel. So be sure to watch that because I will be doing a little bit of hand lettering to write the happy harvest. Um, but overall, this is good. Of course, if you want it to look a little rougher, you could always water the paint, the water, the color down a little more. I was just going to take a paper towel so I didn't see as much of the brush strokes. I'm just trying to get an effect I want. You could always get a sander and sand it a little bit. This is fairly thin wood I'm using. I just wanted something light that you could either attach with command strips temporarily or create a little wire on the back, nothing too, too intense. So let me make sure I have orientation right here. I can't think that's about right in my, back this up so y'all can kind of see. Well, by wiping that down, I also actually let it dry a little bit. You don't want to leave acrylic on your paintbrushes, so make sure you put them in water. I just use these little wee cups, and I usually have three per session, just so I don't have to get up and change them out. But if you just have any type of regular cup, that'll work. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw a circle. So I'm kind of looking around my room going, okay, what do I have as a circle to trace? <laughs> and I found some just painter's tape that I have that I think will be the perfect size. So I am gonna use the outside of that. And I'm just gonna find the center and I'm gonna use a pencil to draw that, okay? And so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going, I'm going to um, draw where my little, um, florals are going to be and this is going to be fairly simple so I always after I draw my circle I just try to kind of have some little flare flare outs that I can build from so it's just not it's, it'll be fuller of course going out towards the corners are always a good idea because then you can fill out some um and really, this is just kind of a guide. It's nothing that I have to stick with. So you can kind of see I have some areas. And then my wording will be able to fit in here. Happy harvest. Or you can say fall sweet. Fall, you can write whatever you want, but I'm going to be doing um, harvest. And then I can add more. All right. So in the way of a color scheme, it can kind of be whatever. Um, you can do multiple colors. You can do a monochromatic. I'm just going to pick some fall co co uh, colors. I'll probably do a little bit of pumpkins in here just because it is going to be harvest. Um, maybe some gourds. So I have, I'm using a, just a yellow, a flag red. I'm going to use this golden sunset. If you have an okra color, that'll probably do. These craft paints are just convenient. They're cheap. They're like 97 cents. I might even have some greens in here. I got like a teal green. Um, white is always good to have to kind of be able to add value. 
got highlights and stuff. Um, and then I actually have an orange somewhere. So behind my work, I just have a piece of cardboard and my camera does not want to stay up um, to protect my desk. My desk is actually pretty painted on, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, um, to start, I'm gonna use this really tiny paintbrush. It is a size two round brush. And this will kind of just help me get started. So I think, usually I start with yellow, but for some reason I'm really drawn to this red today. I almost always like to, um, when I start, just have two colors together. So I'm using the little red and orange, if you can see that mix up. Um, and I didn't mix it perfectly. But I'm just, and mine's still a little wet, so just be aware. And I'm just gonna try to smooth. You want a, almost like a bead of paint at the end of your paintbrush. And I'm just pulling it one way. You're not going back and forth, otherwise it'll kind of cause your bristles to buff out. Um, and the reason why we're doing acrylic on this instead of watercolor is because it's just a little more sturdy on wood. It'll show up better. Watercolor will kind of absorb into the wood. Watercolor is really better for paper. I'm sorry if you hear my voice. And so now I'm just gonna kind of create these little, <laughs> little kind of leafy things. So we will keep on doing this and from here you can even have some other little kind of breakouts so just kind of pushing down I'm not really sure I'm just kind of making this <laughs> up as I go but this is pretty you know just pushing down with the brush you can always make it bigger or smaller and Please excuse my boys if you can hear them. I'm not sure what you can hear on the video, but they are being very rowdy today. I can add some circles. This is a little bit harder. I might need to load my brush up a little more and just do a, a dab here and there. So to balance, to make sure I'm not kind of like losing sight of everything, I'm gonna come over here and that was too much paint on my paintbrush. I'm gonna come in here and do a little reddish branch over here. And you can see I, I hadn't drawn that one out, but I just wanted to, the good thing about it being a square is you can really rotate it around. And then I'm gonna go through, and you'll get, you, you'll get better at this. I feel like I'm already getting a little bit better about my strokes and if it if like that one was a little bit longer than I really meant to do but overall in the big scheme of things you probably won't notice that so I'm gonna let it let it go for now if I need to adjust I will but right now I'm just gonna kind of let it be I think I'm gonna do one kind of coming out over here again I just like to break that red up a little bit with an orange so I can even add doesn't have to come from the same place every time. And that's a little bit thicker, but that's okay. Um, I'll just kind of have it. Whoop. So I'm getting a little bit heavier handed, which I didn't mean to. I just noticed that I was doing that. Um, so I have, I, I can just kind of work with that and let it be, or I can go back and make those a little heavier handed. Um, by turning it, I probably earlier, I probably would have prevented that, but I, I wasn't necessarily paying attention. I was listening to my children screaming in the background. <laughs> um, so that's always, always fun. Um, but here we go. Okay, I think I'm gonna do just like a little, little one over here. It doesn't have to be anything 
And I'll probably come back and use this color more later. I'm just trying to set set some color. Now that's pretty orange. But I like that. I might kind of work with that too. I'm trying to go from out to in towards this. Just a little touch here and there. Um, so we're getting started here. So that's just the first part. This is pretty heavy handed over here. Might have to go and break that up with a different color later on. Um, and then now I'm going to go through and do some dots just while I'm thinking of it. Sometimes those little bears, they look kind of like bears. Now make sure you're not sticking your hand and then dragging it through. I have done that and it is fixable, but I'd rather not deal with that. So here I go. All right, and all right, so I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off. I need a paper towel. And I'm going to make sure all of my paint is off. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some little pumpkins and I'm gonna start them off with yellow and then I'll add some orange and I might even do a little bit of that golden yellow. I like to think of it as an okra. And so with the pumpkins, I'm just going to draw some little circles. Now, I do kind of need to decide potentially where, which way I'm doing this. So once I get kind of the drift of the pumpkin, I'm just going to come through and add a little bit of red and a, or a little bit of orange and a little bit of red kind of to give shape to that pumpkin. And it really, it doesn't have to be super exact. We're just kind of giving the impression of it. So while I did that yellow and orange all together on that one, on the next few ones, I'm gonna kind of block out where my pumpkins are gonna go and they can be bigger or littler. I'm just gonna try to block out where they are and I can always adjust the shape later. But it's kind of like a squatty oval <laughs> is the best way to describe it. You don't have, you know, you don't have to be right on the circle with these. But I'm, I am going a little bit on the fast side when I'm painting that yellow, just because I do wanna be able to get that orange in there and blend it pretty good. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and do two right around here. Um, so as I'm doing this, I might take away the fact that I was going to do it as a diamond because I just realized I kind of had the have these pumpkins aimed up that way. And it's just going to probably have to be more of a square, which is fine. I'm okay with that. The good thing about these squares being <laughs> only $2 is I feel like, you know, it's I could do a few. And here we go. A little bit of red. And it just depends on how dark you want your pumpkin. So I'm just trying to do some round strokes in there. They don't really have to be super even. Just to give it that feel. And the good thing about acrylic is if you mess up, you can. Oh, I could always go back later with the yellow and kind of try to cover up some. I'd probably have to do a little more yellow and white. But... Could probably get it just just fine like right there that's kind of funky so what I might do is get a little bit of yellow a little bit of white I can just kind of go through Ooh, it's a little too white I could even do a little orange I might even do some white on all of these just to have a fun little highlight gives it that pretty Feel. Oh yeah, I like the white in there. Kind of tones it down too. All right, so we got some pumpkins. I'm gonna do a little teal stem on them. I think that'll be pretty. If you didn't know, I'm making this up as I go. So 
I really, I'm like a big teal person. So my house is all like blues and greens and teals. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, I could bring some fall colors in here, but still tie it in with the teal. And I can add more pumpkins later again. Like I can add more red later. I'm just trying to kind of get started. So I like this teal color a lot. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of white in it to kind of get another, some more curly cues coming. So I almost wish I had a smaller paintbrush. But I, this is what I have, so I'm going to work with it. I might actually have like a, I can't even think of what it's called. Um, one of these. If you have one of these, I feel like I would still have trouble. Look at this teeny tiny, I have a teeny tiny, it's like a half of a round brush. I might try that just for this little curly cue. Yeah, that's a little better. So if you have a teeny tiny one, go for it. <laughs> I can even go back in with the darker color after it's done and kind of um, give that curly cue a little more umph. All right. Might need to let that dry. So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna rinse my tiny paintbrush off because I really don't want that to get ruined. And then go back with my teal. And what I think I'm gonna do is just add some little curly cues. And these can be tricky because you kind of are gonna have to turn. You don't wanna just necessarily go like that. It's not a pencil, it's a paintbrush. So you have to be very aware of your brush direct direction of your brush um, hairs because that can be very um, challenging to work with. So you can kind of see I'm trying, and the grain of the wood, trying to um, go the direction I think my brush will cooperate the most. I'm still running into some hiccups. Having a lot of paint on the brush will help. So I'm going to do one more big one, I think. I'm trying to figure out where to connect it. <laughs> Here we go. We're just, I might have to do like another little pumpkin or something there. But this is just going to be a fun little added color to this. And I'd, it's not necessarily going to stop here. So with, I don't know about you guys, but with kind of being stuck at home, I feel like I'm getting really into decorating for the seasons, changing it up just to, just to have something new to look at in my home. And um, I don't really want to spend money and I like being creative. So I think this is kind of a fun way to accomplish both. You can find some pretty cheap crafty stuff. You can paint over things you already have. Um, so I'm taking some white now and just highlighting this a little bit. I can always go back and add the dark again. I'm just kind of going over it just to give it something a little extra to look at. So it's not just all, all the same. I don't know. I probably could have done it a little bit more flowy, but I, I'm going with this. This is what I'm doing. And I mean, a lot of this is just building it up until you're happy. So if you're not happy, just keep on adding. Ooh, I like this curl. Might have to do some littler curls with the... So I was letting these dry, these pumpkins dry a little bit. That's how I kind of went out. And... Um, started doing the ones around the edges so that I could paint a little bit over. See, and this could be, I could add to this. Oops, got white instead. Just take your curl a different way to make it end <laughs> or start. 
I probably should have drawn it with these and then gone, gone over it with a bigger paintbrush. I wasn't thinking, but like I said, I'm kind of just swinging this. I'm making these curls as I, up as I go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't be afraid to overlap what you have. So I can, again, I can go back. I can add more pumpkins. I can add more red. I can add more whatever. So I might do that. Now with the yellows, I kind of like to do some bigger type leaves because you can always add to them. So I am going to get my yellow. Let's get a little bit of white too. Like I said, I'm like a big mix, at least two colors together. Oh, that paintbrush might be a little big for this, but I'm going to go with it. I'm just going to tap down on that line that I drew in the very beginning. I'm adding the leaves first. I don't know if I'll do a line or not. I probably will just because that pencil mark is showing there. Or I might just keep adding until, um, like I'll do, so I did white there. Now I'll do some yellow. You know, it's just going to add a little bit more color. So I'll do some here. Doot, 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 doot. It's like little chicken prints or something. I don't know. That might not have been the right word, but <laughs> it's cute. You can use the golden ochre yellow too. You know, you can just kind of make it layered. Go back here and add some of that in there. I like that. Almost looks like some wheat, you know, and we're going to write um, happy harvest on here. So I'm trying to get some, have it make sense <laughs> with the words a little bit. Um, come back up here. And if you need to draw another line, you can, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about another line. I'm pretty confident, but I am going to, Ooh, and see this one's really, now that I kind of, I haven't washed my paintbrush off. So I have all the, all the colors on there and I don't even have to really go back after that. So I can even blend those in a little bit more. I like that look a little bit better. <laughs> so I can have, um, just looking at where I want some more to come out. And I can always paint over that stem again, which I think I'm gonna have to do. The little, the blue vine. And I can rotate my paper, I keep forgetting that. Uh, or my, not my paper, but my wood thing. Um, and this is, I mean, it, it can be very loose. It doesn't have to be, you know, a perfect, perfectly, you know, plan thing. All right. So we got that. I think I want to do some more orange in here. Um, so I'm going to mix a little bit of orange with this okra yellow. And go some other direction with it. Like everything's kind of going the same direction. So I'm going to try and come out here. And maybe I'll just do... Some little, um, almost like berry, like things coming off that are a little bit like berries. And I can do a bunch. Again, if you, you know, get your good color, just mix some more up of it. You can do big berries, you can do little berries. You can just do... I'm just, I'm not really worried about getting them right on the branches I drew. I'm just want to kind of get a bunch of, um, stems out there. I can always go back and do even just the golden color. I can even go back in and add a little bit of red if I decide I needed to, which I think I kind of do. I think the red will. make that orange pop 
All right. So, I'm still doing some dots. It's kind of up to you how perfectly round. Oh, I kind of like these. I'm almost like rather than trying to get a perfect circle, doing they almost look like golden rods. Can even go that way if I wanted to with some more yellow. I do want some red though. Yeah, I can do some more. So I got on my pumpkin a little bit. That's okay though. Again, we're just trying to get this to read. You know, it's fall harvest. Um, you're not necessarily, while we're painting one element at a time, when you're looking at it as a whole, it's not necessarily going to look like that. And I just realized I didn't put that bright yellow in here, and I think it needs it. To balance that out. Red. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. See how it's starting to fill in a little bit? Um... I do, I think I want to go back over some of my initial pieces and I'm just streaking some orange right over that red because now it's dry and I don't, I still don't love this one. I might even bring that out just so it has a chance to get a little bit lighter. I don't know what happened over there. <laughs> it is a little bit, a little bit on the heavy side, um, but that's okay. I'll just add some orange in here. You could add, you know, a light orange by adding white to it if you want it more pastel-y. Um, I think I need a little pumpkin down in here, so I'm not washing my paintbrush off. I'm just gonna give myself a little little whitey pumpkin over here oops yellow and orange and then i'm gonna add white so i had to clean off my paintbrush because that went a little bit too dark too quick okay and there we go so now i'm gonna do my little stem I'm gonna get my little paintbrush, my teeny tiny. I wanna add some stem over here. And again, if your paint's not dry on one of your other layers, you could have some contamination. It's up to you on if you want to stop and wait until it dries, or just keep kind of pushing through and just work with it how you can. I don't know how I did this over here. Maybe I shouldn't have painted over it because I liked it before. So I think I went up, down, and then around. That's okay. That's fine. And then this one can just, I probably should let this dry, but I'm just gonna go for it. There. Have a little curly cue. And then I can do with these these little ones, I might even, you know what I think I'm gonna do is mix up like a little bit of a tealish green with the yellow in that teal. And I might even have a little white. Cause like I said, I have a lot of teals in my house, so having a little more green. And I am just gonna add some little curly cues kind of <laughs> bouncing out everywhere and they're not you know I can kind of draw them first and then go through and thicken them up to make sure that they're really how I want them so sometimes I'll go I'll curl it one way and then all of a sudden I'll go a different way and just add some fun little quirkiness to it. I like that color. I might have to do something else with that color. I don't know what. I'm just kind of going over to make them a little more bold. 
Just looking to see if there's anything else I might need. So I'm just kind of looking back through, just trying to look at the elements. You know, I want a variety of strokes. I want a variety of thicknesses. I want a little variety of um, spacing. I think I'm going to lighten this up even more. That co I like that color. But I'm going to lighten it up and add a little bit of yellow, a little more yellow to it. And I might just do some bigger leaves because <laughs> I like this color. I li I'm liking the, the, with the added to it. And so my leaves are just going to kind of be here and there. And they don't, I mean, they can have some white showing through and I might add some more color to them but the good thing about this kind of leaf is it really can be any size they look good in pairs they look good single um and so they can just be used to kind of like beef up your your um wreath so but it's really fun to do this and I mean, you don't have to use the colors I'm using. You could do them in purples and oranges or all blues, you know. The good thing about this is I'm just kind of showing you one idea of color combinations. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to this. Oops, that was a little more than I wanted. Just to give it some depth. So it's not, just not a green blob. And I could always use yellow and do like a highlight but I thought that would be a nice little addition. I feel like I need a little leafy over here or something. Maybe even one over here. Oop. I don't know why I just sipped it in that super bright yellow, but I did. <laughs> so there you go. I might add a few of those actually because I kind of liked it. No, what I it was a happy accident here. So as you can see, I'm just kind of going everywhere. And another little thing like that's easy to do with color is just kind of add some berries to places with white or with um red or orange or blue or you know whatever color you wanted to get in there that maybe you didn't get to get in there. So I'm gonna do this. Just kind of add, I mean, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just almost like a little stroke. And again, it's not, you're, you're not looking at this at the individual components necessarily, but more of um, a whole. Okay, so happy with this. You know, it went through a stage where it was kind of like, eee. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I mean, in the end, it just kind of gets, gets to be a good point if you just kind of keep at it. So, and that's a good thing. If you have pencil marks that are going to bother you, just wait an hour for it all to dry and then you'll be good. All right. I'm going to write happy harvest. I don't have a ton of room in here. This is a pretty small square. I can't think of the size. I thought I had a ruler right here, but I don't see it. Um, I think it's like an eight by eight square. So I'm going to have to write very small. Now, normally I would let this dry, but I'm pretty confident. I'll put this. So I'm going to write happy harvest and harvest is going to be in script. So I'm trying to think of the letters happy and it's okay. I'm, I'll probably do it in black. Happy. And I always do this in pencil first. So if I mess up, I can erase it. And my harvest is going to be tricky because I do. I really didn't give myself a ton of room. I am going to kind of, I don't normally like go into my drawing, but I'm going to have to. Harvest. Okay. I got a little bit of a bump in there, but that's fine. So, um... Normally I would paint this, but I'm really thinking about just doing it in a Sharpie first to see how it looks. So I have this Sharpie pen 
and I'm going to do it first in Sharpie. And if I can get away with that, that'll be a lot easier than painting. If you guys have tried to paint words before, it's a struggle. So to avoid erasing, I am trying to be very careful. But like I said, I did a little hand lettering class. Um, the capital letters are kind of just my own style. Now you, if you're using Sharpie, you definitely um, don't want to get it, the tip wet or else your Sharpie is going to go kaput. Um, get sure I'm not sticking my pinky in a pile of something. Just, and then I can go through and thicken up my letters. And I can do that with paint. I can just do one side. I can, um, on the cursive letter, I must always do the downstroke. Sometimes on the all capital, just handwritten letters, I will do um, them all kind of bolder. But I like this so far. Okay. Got some paint on my hands. All right. So I'm going to thicken this up. Right now I'm just going to block it out because I think some of it needs to still dry before I really go all out with coloring it in. Acrylic does dry really fast. So I'm going to wait and do that uh, loop on the H after I get the rest of this colored in. And I can, you can make those edges as thick as you want. So you can kind of see, I think the Sharpie looks nice. Sometimes the Sharpie just is all you need. Um, I mean, and the good thing about Sharpies is they come in all shapes and sizes. These pens don't bleed like some of the markers do, especially when you're doing on wood, you and I mean, I would not have used this if I hadn't done the acrylic first, because it would have just gotten that everywhere. Um, and that's also why you don't paint with watercolor on wood, because it just bleeds into the grain of the wood. You can't really control it, whereas acrylic is more of a, um, a thicker coating that will stay put. So here we go. Happy harvest. Now I can go back. I'm pretty confident this is now dry. If not, you could always get a um a blow dryer too. So there you go. Happy harvest. A fun little um decoration, and you can come up with all sorts of things to do around there. Um, you know, you could even fill it in more than what I have. I, I like to leave a little white space, um, you know, and then you could do a little frame around it or not. I don't think you need it. I think it'll be just great just the way it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, um, these are free Donate What You Can classes. If you'd like to make a donation, please go to our website, which is www.chestnutcreekarts.com. Dot org, And we are a nonprofit school located in Galax, Virginia. If you're ever in the area, please stop by and see us. We'd love to see you. And check out all our other classes we are, we are offering. We're adding them weekly. Thank you and have a great day.